Hey everyone, welcome back to Copper Line Rattler Ranch. I'm Julia. Let me show you how far we've gotten in the bedroom and we'll talk about some damaging rains and wind that we've had the last few days. All right, so I've managed to finish nearly all of the bedroom. I do have to finish this side of this door frame on the inside of that frame uh, with a little bit of mud when I do the next batch for the living room. Um, you can see the lentils, I've gotten them all covered. I've tried a couple of different techniques in here. Um, you can see they're still curing because there's a little bit more mud than there is on the regular walls. So on like you can see here, the two ends of that lentil are still curing. The center is not as deep. I kind of tried to feather or, or you know, smooth it in so that the bulk of the extra mud was on the outside to help it soften a little bit. Same here and then the same over the big door frame. Maybe not be able to tell that well because the light's kind of shining. Um, and that one was pretty deep, so it's probably gonna be the most noticeable, but still we can't see the lintel and it's gonna help with off-gassing of any chemicals that might still be in that uh, railroad tie that we used. Over here, this one was the first one I did, and that's just really super thick all the way through. I didn't like how that was working out. I had to do a couple little repairs for some large cracks on it. Those are those two spots that you see still curing. Um, so, you know, that I decided when I moved on down, I was gonna try to go, you know, a little bit thinner layer of mud or of, of cob and uh, just kind of feather it, like I said, because the ends as you can see on either end of this one, um, were really deep. The, the, they, the lentils were not as wide as the walls ended up being. So that's why I want to just kind of smooth it out, make it a little less noticeable that there's a lentil. When it's all painted with the lime wash or lime paint, whatever, um, hopefully it won't be as noticeable. It'll just add some character to the room. And everything floor to ceiling, Oh, I got the light on over here, so I don't want to shine it in your eyes. Here's this side. All done. Now, there's still some fine cracks, but as I do more and more research on lime wash, lime paint kind of things, um, everybody says leave those because that lime wash will fill in those cracks nicely and it'll help grab. The lime wash will not be waterproof, but it's inside the house, so it doesn't matter if it's waterproof or not. Uh, this is the bedroom. It also uh, is easy to make repairs if anything does happen to flake off, that kind of thing. So there's where we stand in the bedroom. I'm happy with it. It all turned out great. I love it. So next up will be the living room. This is part of the living room. That's that north wall. You can definitely see where the cob layers were versus the earth bag layers. Earth bag layers down here cob layers up here. We do have a little bit of leaking happening, but we have not finished that roof yet. So that is why we're having a little bit of leaking. Um, hopefully the monsoon will be over in the next three weeks or so. A little bit of leaking over into the bathroom, so that's why we're kind of putting things off uh, because we have some issues with that roof line over there. Dawn is working to repair those issues um, before we put the uh, membranes and the uh, elastomeric coating on the roof. So he's been working to try and get those, trying to find where those leaks are coming from. We know that they're trailing down the bond beam on this wall, dribbling here, dribbling down inside the bathroom when it rains really hard. Also, Don put this header in. Um, we'd been talking about it and one of our viewers had said, you know, you really need that. And we'd had been discussing whether we needed it or not. And I'm really glad that that viewer told us, I can't remember his name, um, uh, encouraged us to put these headers in. So he put this one in and he still has to put this one in. So these are two by eights, um, double stacked, like laminated, I guess, if you will, two by eight side by side uh, to make a header over those two pocket door frames. So thank you to that viewer who uh, encouraged us to do that. I'm really glad that we do have some people out there looking out for us. Um, we're not professionals at anything that we do here, and we do appreciate, you know, some assistance from anybody who does know what they're doing. Um, but like I said, we had talked about putting them in, and we were still kind of discussing it every once in a while, like, do we really need them? Um, this wall here isn't super, super long. I would say it's probably about 
21 feet, so it's not a huge, 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 huge wall. Um, just 20, 21 feet from, from this side all the way over to this side. So uh, that's why we went with the two by, actually, it's not why we went with the two by eights. We went with the two by eights because we couldn't find any two by tens. And these suckers were expensive. So um, without going all the way to Sierra Vista, which is an hour and 15 minute drive each way, we just went down to Douglas and the uh, little lumberyard there. Didn't have anything two by 10, and we know that even the two by eight's probably a little bit of overkill, but we'd rather have a little overkill than underkill and have us killed. So, hey, there you go. Anyway, we did get, as you can see, I'll show you, you probably noticed just a moment ago, ceiling fan. So we got this ceiling fan put in. We had already put in all of our outlets, or not our outlets, but our outlet boxes when we were building. When we got to, I want to say the fifth or sixth course, we went ahead and put our uh, conduit with our electrical wiring pulled through, and it was all ready to go. And while I was doing the mud on this room, Don went ahead and wired everything up uh, so that we could use these outlets. And he thought, well, while we're doing that, let's go ahead and get a ceiling fan. Because we've been talking about a ceiling fan in the bedroom and the living room. So we bought this ceiling fan. He went ahead and hooked it up. We know we'll have to take it down when we do the ceiling. Um, but it certainly does help. It certainly helps uh, to help keep the humidity a little more even in here. It helps so when we're working in here to help keep us a little cooler. Because right now the, the rooms are a little warmer than what we anticipated. We don't have any insulation in the ceiling yet, so that could be part of the problem. We're hoping that that's the problem, basically. Um, but we're prepared in case we do have to do something more to help keep things cool and comfortable in here. So Don did get our box started, our electrical uh, breaker box started. Um, these power supply lines are a little bit smaller than what we decided we need, so we only use the one ceiling fan and one room of breakers at a time. So um, we do have a friend who's going to donate uh, a significant amount of heavier gauge electrical wiring um, to us, and we will get that all redone. This we actually pulled, let me come over here, we pulled through quite a long time ago. We pulled through underground in that conduit and that was a freaking struggle. So Don knows that uh, the wiring that we're going to get from our friend is too heavy a gauge to pull through this. So we're going to actually come through in a different route, come from the powerhouse where all the solar equipment is. And he wants to come through down the wall here where all of our other uh, water lines um, and other power lines are going to be coming in and out way down there. Um, through the wall that way. So uh, we'll have that to look forward to. But right now it's working fine because we're not running a lot of equipment. This house was never meant to be anything over the over 120. Uh, never intended to have anything greater than 120 running in this house. So technically we could probably get away with this wiring, but we want to make sure that we're, we're safe. We always want to make sure that we're safe. Um, so we want a little bit heavier gauge. But for right now, as a temporary measure, this is keeping us in power in here so we don't have to run a lot of extension cores outside into the powerhouse, um, that kind of thing, or to a generator that would make a lot of noise, anything like that. So that's where we are. And I can kind of show you, let me show you some of the damage that these uh, wicked rains have done for us lately. All right, we've had, oh, there's a little birdie up there. We've had a lot of rains coming out of the east. This is the east side of the house. And the one that was really awful that caused some damage to our antenna and our pole for that, and also our WeBoost pole was damaged, um, did a lot of damage to this side because the winds were 60 mile an hour plus from what our neighbors whose station stayed up uh, were able to tell us, and it just kind of ripped all this off. Um, I'm not really worried because like I said, monsoon should only last another three to four weeks. Um, if it gets much worse, I'll worry about it, but it's as soon as I put it on, it seems to rain and wash it off. So um, unless I see any damages, hush, birdie birds, um, that are significant, I'm gonna let it go because once everything stops with monsoon, we're gonna go ahead and do outside stuff, no matter where we're at on the inside. Don will work on the roof and I'm gonna work on getting another layer of cob out here. And I'm not sure yet 
if we'll do the linseed oil or if we'll do a lime plaster because lime plaster in and of itself is supposed to be waterproof so i'm hoping to find out some more information it just makes me a little nervous i just want to make sure that we're absolutely waterproof so it's similar to this around the house the north side not too bad that's where we did the repairs you can still see some stuff blown away a um, little bit missing nothing too terrible and then the west side pretty much clean um, the south side has this damages similar to the north, or I'm sorry, not the north, the east side here. So we'll take a quick gander over there. There's another east side. That's the east side of the bedroom. You can see that buttress over there is stripped down a little bit. And this east wall, not too bad. That's where I fixed it before. And this east, not really too bad. A little bit under the windows. Um, like I said, I'm not going to worry about it unless I see some uh, seepage. The bags are a little moist. They're not squishy wet. So they're drying out whenever we have a nice sunny day um, or a nice sunny afternoon before the next rain, they dry out again. So that's where we're at. So like I said, unless I see something that's really troubling, a little bit of stuff sloughed off out here, but not much. Ooh, lovely hair day. Um, anyway. That's the damages that have happened in these storms lately. Biggest storm was, I want to say, Saturday. Oh, it was wicked. Over an inch of rain. We're estimating from how slogged the roads have been. Um, and our own drive, probably more than an inch. Uh, our weather station went down before it finished recording. It actually blew down. <clears throat> um, and so we couldn't get the actual mileage on the winds. But our, we have a couple neighbors that we talked to and they're telling us that their stations reported 60 plus mile an hour winds and over an inch, inch and a half. One, part, one, one neighbor had an inch and a half. They're a couple miles from us. Inch and a half of rain in that same storm. So the last couple of days we've gotten nearly a half inch every day. Um, every day but one since then and it's Wednesday. So one, two, three, four days. Uh, so another inch and a half in this, in this week. So, uh, phew. I'm glad it's almost over and we can finish this house. Um, but we're going to keep plugging along on what we can do on the inside. Don's feeling a little under the weather today. Um, so I'm going to do what I can. I got to get the living room ready to go for doing this kind of mudding on the walls in there. Um, rinsing off the scaffold that I had in here and I got to get it into the living room. I can't just take it through the wall. And I got to get the mixer moved over there. I'm going to leave the uh, straw that I'm uh, chopping up in the bedroom just to keep it out of the way and it's light enough that I can easily move it from one room to the other. I do have to sift some more soil but it's kind of wet. I want it to maybe dry out a little bit today if, if we can keep the rains from coming um, too early then maybe by late morning early afternoon I can sift it will be a little bit drier. Get a number of five gallon pails uh, sifted so I can <sighs> just start mudding and mudding and mudding and mudding. So the living room doesn't have as many issues as the bedroom. And that, by that, I just mean windows, basically. You've got a window, a pedestrian door, and a um, slider door frame to go around. The bedroom has three windows and the slider, and then, of course, all those uh, outlets. So we do have uh, seven outlets in the living room that I'll have to worry about getting, oops, sorry, getting around and... Um, that's, I hate going around those stupid outlets because it's just kind of a pain. Um, but there's a lot more overall wall surface that's nothing. And those big wide open spaces on the walls go pretty quickly. It's just when I have to work around uh, the windows, the lentils, and those outlets. Um, of course, the doors. Uh, that takes a little bit of time. So I'll be excited to have a lot of big wall space to, to do all at once. Like that north wall, there's no obstructions. Um, except a couple of outlets and then also the inlet for the uh, geothermal cooling um, is there and uh, I'll have to go through those but that that inlet's not going to be anything I'll show it to you and then just the outlets I've already done some so it's kind of getting to be routine but still it's just kind of a pain. So this round black tube is the inlet for our geothermal cooling. 
Uh, what we'll do when we do that is we'll open like uh, the bedroom windows, any windows that we have to help exhaust the hot air, the living room windows, and that'll draw the cool air from the earth through. When we get that going, we will do a video on that because we are going to have someone come out and dig us our trench for the um, tubing to go in. Uh, uh, and when we drop the tubing down in there, we'll do all that and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, how that works or how we hope that that works. So that's just one more thing I have to go through in here. And of course I have to pack mud in there, in between the wall, uh, the earth bag and um, cob wall and the wood frame wall, just to kind of meet it all together. Because like I said before, in past videos, um, we went ahead with what was stable on the earth bags when we started our repair with the cob on top. Um, and it's kind of lumpy bumpy, but we'll, we'll kind of try see what we can do to kind of make that less offensive, if you will, whatever it might have to be. I'll just kind of probably blend things in so that you just can't notice it or you just won't notice it as much as you do now. So even like over here, it's not as bad not as noticeable, but for some reason right here, there's a big lump. Um, this was where the worst of the wall collapse happened, one of the deeper parts, uh, so I think that's probably why. But those, those bags are stable. There's a little one peeking out. So here's a little one, here's a little bag peeking out. Uh, some of the mud that we put on in the inside, some of the cob we put on the inside washed a little bit because we hadn't had the roof on. So some of, that's why it looks kind of hairy with the straw and why we had some bag exposure. But that's pretty solid there. Um, so yeah, it's coming along swimmingly. Uh, once <laughs> the monsoon's over, I think we'll be able to just fly through this whole thing. I'm hoping it'll just be time consuming doing all the mudding on the outside and whether we decide that we're going to uh, linseed oil or um, do the lime plaster is what we'll, we'll decide as, as we go. We just always like to be flexible in, in what we're doing so that if something has to be changed, we're not going to freak out if we have to change something. So anyway, there you go. I think that's going to be it for this week's video. Um, hopefully I can get it uploaded because like I said, our weed boost is down because the tower went down and you've got to have it up high in the air so that it can make contact with um, all the cell tower stuff <laughs> that we don't have that much around us. So anyway, hopefully it won't take 14 hours to upload like I've had in the past, but I'll work on it and get it out for you guys. I hope you enjoy the video. Um, I'm glad to see that our progress is happening. It's really uh, uplifting and motivating for us to see that we're making some progress and not having to kind of sit out the um, monsoon season. It was about a year ago when this north wall collapsed and that put us back to getting to this point, we figured about 10 months. So had we not had that happen, we'd have been living in the house by now. Um, the thing about that too, you have to, understand that uh, we're not the only ones who've had a collapse like this. I know that there have been several, probably at least three videos I found on YouTube where people have shown that they've had a collapse of some sort. Working with earth bags individually like we have, working with the, the tubes, the earth bag material tubes, that poly tube, even working with the hyper adobe tubes I've seen where people have had a collapse round, square, rectangular, people have had collapses. It's something you kind of have to be aware of. And it, it it's not gonna happen to everybody and I hope to God it doesn't happen to anybody else. But just keep in mind, if it does, it can be repaired. If it does, you can take an assessment of everything that's left standing. Um, see what you need to do to repair it. Look at other people's videos, like the My Little Homestead people were building their Muse Art studio. It's a two-story, one-story underground, one-story above ground, and the above ground portion had a huge collapse. And they fixed it in a different way than what we did. 
Um, I've seen other people who have had other collapses and they fix things in different ways from what we did. Some people just tear everything out and start over. Some people tear down the portion that's damaged and redo bags or hyper adobe. Um, we tore down what, what uh, had collapsed and decided, we talked about it. I mean, it really was devastating. We talked about it for a little while and uh, decided to do the um, cob, which I'm kind of glad we did. It gave us another experience of a different material. Um, to use and and uh, that was really kind of interesting. It really almost became a new motivator. It did take longer to do that than we would have to repair it with the bags, but honestly, I was nervous about repairing that wall with the bags. So I'm glad that we went ahead and with the cob. It's actually holding up quite well with all this rain this year. That's it for this video this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below this video. And we will see you next time. Bye.